So we're going to look at rational functions with slant asymptotes, particularly of the form ax squared plus b over x. So what might one of those functions look like? Let's look at a specific example. This is the function 4x squared plus 3 over x, and you can see that it has two asymptotes, one at x equals 0, and another slant or oblique asymptote at uh, 4x. So we're going to have to figure out how to find those two asymptotes, and then maybe also to deal with these turning points that are happening here. The function that we just looked at, 4x squared plus 3 over x, now if we want to find the asymptotes, um, the vertical asymptote is very, very straightforward. We just need to find out what x cannot be. And x is sitting on the bottom of the fraction here, so x cannot be 0 because you're not allowed to divide by 0. All right, so there's one of our asymptotes. Now, what about that weird slant asymptote? Well, let's take a look at this function. We can take this function and split it up into two separate sections. So we can say f of x is equal to 4x squared over x plus 3 over x. And now we can uh, simplify this to be 4x, because 4x squared over x is 4x, plus 3 over x. Now, conceptually, let's think about what this looks like. We've been talking about asymptotes, and we've been talking about asymptotes as lines that functions get closer and closer to, but never ever touch. And perhaps the thing that we think about most is the never ever touch part. But the first part of that sentence is also really important. A function, uh, a line that the function gets closer and closer and closer to. It gets closer and closer and closer to being the asymptote. So to sort of simplify what is essentially a limits equation, we can say when f of x is equal to 4 times a big number, like a really big number, plus 3 over a really big number, what do we get? Well, we get 4 times a big number. That's just a really big number times 4. Plus 3 divided by a really big number. Now, that number starts getting so small because 3 divided by a gajillion is just like so tiny that it barely exists. And when we're talking about limits as x approaches infinity, this stops existing essentially, and we're left with this 4x. And that 4x that 4x there is going to be our asymptote. A little bit by saying as x approaches infinity, f of x equals 4x, therefore the asymptote at y equals 4x. So we have pretty much all the pieces of the puzzle now. We have an asymptote, x equals 0. We have an asymptote, at y equals 4x. Uh, we just need to know what those turning points are. So we can see there are two of those turning points, so we're going to do two equations to find them. So we're essentially going to use... Um, completing the square, but maybe not quite how you've seen it before. So we've got um, the function, which is f of x equals uh, 4x squared plus 3 over x. Now I'm going to complete the square on the top, which means I need an a value of 1. So I'm just going to take that 4 out, which gives me x squared plus 3 on 4. Now, to complete the square, I need to come up with an x value to put in there. So usually when we complete the square, we work the other way. We say, I've got an x value, and I'm going to halve it and square it and come up with a new value. Now, to come up with the x value, I'm going to have to square root this and double it. So it's going to look something like 4 bracket. Oh, I should keep my x on the bottom, shouldn't I? Okay, so it's going to look something like this. I'm going to square root it and double it. So I'm going to get 4x squared, different color. Uh, square root it and double it. And that's an x value. All right, and then I've got my plus 3 on 4. But then I need to, like, subtract that as well. I need a matching one. Minus 2 root 3 on 4. x. Now, all of that is going to be uh, over x. Now, by doing that, I've inserted this x in here, and what I have is a perfect square um, here. Uh, so I can rewrite that now as 4 bracket x plus um, root 3 on 4 squared. 
Now you can check that, uh, square that, you'll get x squared, you'll get root 3 on 4 times x times 2, so 2 root 3 on 4x, and square that and you'll get 3 on 4. And then finally we have this guy out the back here. Now, uh, I'm not multiplying it, I've sort of expanded this bracket, so it's 4 times that, so it's going to be negative 8 root 3 on 4x. And all of that now is divided by x. Now if I split it up, if I split it up, I'll get 4x plus root 3 on 4 squared over x. Uh, and then this bit, minus 8 root 3 on 4x divided by x will be just minus 8 root 3 on 4. Why have we done all of this? Uh, because doing this allows us to come up with uh, a minimum and a maximum value, or a local minimum and a local maximum. So look at this function. In particular, look at uh, this bit in here, right? Now, that x value, um, if I can make those brackets equal zero, what will happen is this entire section will equal zero, and the function will just equal eight root. 3 on 4. Now, if x was a larger number, say x was the number 1, this would be 1 plus root 3 on 4 times 4, uh, squared times 4 over something. It would be a number, a number larger than 0. If I were to put a number in here, say minus 5, it would be minus 5 root 3 on 4, and then that would be squared, so that would be positive. No matter what I put in there, I'm going to get a positive value here. So that 4 over x minus 8 root 3 on 4, it's going to be a number here. So it's going to be uh, greater than 8 root 3 on 4, right? Um, so that means that the minimum occurs when I can let that bracket equal 0. Minimum at x plus root 3 on 4, a minimum at x, or I should say a minimum or a maximum at x equals negative root 3 on 4. Now at that point, we're going to have um, negative 8 root 3 on 4 be our y value. Now it's not going to be a minimum, it's going to be a maximum. But we'll just call it a turning point for now, that's, that's a better way to think about it. So x equals negative root 3 on 4, y equals negative 8 root 3 on 4, that point that point there is uh, that point right there. But what about, what about this point? We've found a point now, but what about the other point? Well, I chose to complete the square using plus two root three on four x, but I actually also could have completed the square with negative two root three on four x. Placing that uh, negative there instead, instead of having x minus root three on four, our next line will have x but instead of having x plus root 3 on 4, our next line will be x minus root 3 on 4. It's all the way down to here, and a turning point that is the exact opposite of uh, this turning point here. That's it. We now know everything we need to know about this to sketch it. We know it's asymptote at x equals 0, a slant asymptote at y equals 4x, uh, a turning point using this kind of weird reverse completing the square, at negative root uh, 3 on 4. I need to be careful with my roots there though, don't I? Root 3 on 4. And y equals negative 8 root 3 on 4. And uh, turning points, the same. Could just be 8 root 3 on 2. It's a bit ugly. You get the idea. Um, those are our rational functions with slant asymptotes. Sketch it and it should look like. 